Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to LinkedIn Tuesdays. It is May 3rd, 2022. For those people on Zoom, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please just put them into the chat box. For those watching on Facebook, please just put your questions into the comment field. And you're more than welcome to uh, enter your personal contact information in the chat window so that you can connect with everybody on the call and expand the number of connections that you have in the area. Please note this event is being recorded. It's currently live on Facebook. The recording will be on the Career DFW Facebook page and the Career USA YouTube channel for others to view in the future. By participating in this event, you give consent for your name and picture to appear. Please note that any comments you put in the Zoom chat window will not appear in the recording. Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jeff Morris. Back in 2008, I started a website called careerdfw.org a website to help those who are unemployed in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. In 2012, I started a second website, careerusa.org, to help those around the United States. I have written a book called What I've Learned About Your Job Search that you may not know. It's available on Amazon for 15 bucks, or you're more than welcome if you can find me sometime. I always have them with me. Uh, I'll sell it to you for $10. So you can save five bucks by buying directly from me. Uh, since 2007, I've been facilitating and leading the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group. The group's been around since the late 1990s. I took it over in 2007, and I will tell you about our upcoming program at the end of this session. And since 2017, I've been a member of the practice interview team. As I've said many times before, your resume, your LinkedIn profile is not going to get you a job. It will get you a phone call how well you practice your interviewing skills is what's going to get you that job. So if you'd like to have more information on the Dallas Pit Crew, just reach out to uh, dallaspitcrew.com and you'll get all the information you need right there on how to, how to uh, schedule an interview. Well, we have four outstanding speakers who talk about LinkedIn on a monthly basis. It's the beginning of a new month, so we're starting off with a, uh, starting out at the very top here on the very left-hand side with Locke Alderson. He's going to talk about how to use LinkedIn for job hunting, strategies to get the result. So, Locke, thank you for being with us, and I'll turn it over to you. Jeff, thanks for having me on today, and we'll see if we can get this up. Screen share. Um, what do I do? Check no. Yeah. Yeah, you want to you want to take over, so you want to click yes. Okay. Well, as I said, I've been a user on LinkedIn since probably the 2005. And uh, there we go. Come on. For some reason, it's not working, Jeff. But I'm going to have to do it like this. So, so when my name is Locke Alderson, as I mentioned to you, I've been a recruiter for 40 years, 42 years. I actually had my own recruiting firm here in Dallas for 12 of those years. And then in 2001, I just happened to get started in career counseling and career consulting with a workshop at our church. And then that lasted until I was picked up by Mullen International in 2013. They said, you've been doing this as a volunteer for 12 years. How about trying it on contract for 90 days? And that led to four years and 90 days before Mullen sold out to Lee Heck Harrison. Uh, I was with Lee Heck Harrison for about two years before I finally retired at the end of December 2019. I've been working with LinkedIn, as I said, since about 2005, both as a, as a recruiter, as a job hunter, and as a, rear, as a career consultant. So that's what we're going to talk about. The presentation today is going to be available at lockalderson.gmail.com in addition to being live on, on YouTube channel. So if you'd like a copy of the slide deck, you can just send me an email. I'll be happy to send it to you. First thing we want to talk about, what are we going to really talk about today? Well, LinkedIn is a very powerful tool. And so we're going to take a look at it uh, from that perspective, from job hunting. I know Terry Sullivan does it from a different perspective. I sat in on Terry's presentation this morning about updates on what's going on with LinkedIn. And the other presenters on our panel each week give something different kind of view on LinkedIn. We're going to take a look at your, your profile. That's basically your, your resume on steroids on LinkedIn. And you want to take a look at your headline and you're open to work. If you are not open to work, we want to talk about that. We're going to take a look at your dashboard, which is now called analytics, and the about section, which is your summary. And then take a look at your work history and then your skills and endorsements. 
how do you optimize your profile to get found? Because if you're going to be on LinkedIn, one of the objectives in a job hunting mode is to get found. And how do recruiters do searches on LinkedIn? Because it's important to know what the other guy is doing to try and find people. And then searching for jobs, how do you do that? And how do you set job alerts and set the filters? And then how do you go about searching for people for networking? Wouldn't it be nice to be able to network to a re specific recruiter and have their name when you when you talk to them to send them your resume? And then some homework items for you to do when we get started. Next thing we want to take a look at is why LinkedIn will actually get started as a marketing and sales networking tool. And uh, has grown from about 2009. I think Ter Terry said there were about 30 million users on LinkedIn in 2009. That's grown to over 780 million today. And it's the number one tool that's used by recruiters and hiring managers to find and hire candidates. So it's a pretty powerful tool that you want to have in your arsenal. Again, we want to take a look at, as I said, your profile, specifically your headline, your analytics, which is your personal dashboard of activity about you on LinkedIn, the about section, which is your, is your summary. A lot of people just shortchange themselves by only having three or four lines in their in their about section. You can actually have about 2,000 characters in there. That you're open to work. This is something new that LinkedIn introduced to make it easy for recruiters to find you and you be found by others, also for networking. Taking a look at your experience, your work experience, and how does that matter? And then taking a look at your skills and endorsements. So that's the first part. Then how do you optimize that? Again, LinkedIn. Again, one of the things you want to do is complete your profile on LinkedIn. The highest status that you can get is all-star. And that means you basically completed all the sections. You're active on LinkedIn on a regular basis. You want to have a professional headshot and also perhaps a background or banner photo. And again, we can talk a little bit more about that. The headline, basically think about a movie marquee. If the title of the movie isn't on that marquee, you're not going to go there to see the movie. Well, if the recruiter doesn't find that in your headline, likelihood is going to move on to the next person. Okay, And that's going to be the title of the jobs that you're applying for. The open to your work is right under your headline. Some of you haven't even tapped that yet, but we want to take a look at that. The about section, your summary, is an overview of your career. Again, it should use the keywords from your profession, the titles of your jobs, those kinds of things. In that about section, you want to have on the first line, it's vitally important to have your contact information, your phone number and your email address. Reason being is not everybody is is linked to you and not everybody has bought a, an advanced package from LinkedIn, a premium package for us as users, or the LinkedIn recruiter, which runs about $10,000 a year. There's also a, another version called Recruiter Lite that only runs about $5,000 a year. So I know people that have both versions of that, but you wanna get found, make it easy for the recruiter, the hiring manager to find you with your, your contact information, your phone number, you want them to pick up the phone and call you or send you an email. Your experience section is your job title. For those of you who have an unusual job title, like member senior, member of technical staff three, which was one of the companies I worked for, used that kind of titles. Again, spell out what that is in the terms that everybody can understand that generally used in industry when you look for a job. You want to have a description of your duties. Also in your experience section, it's a good idea to identify what the company does with a one-line one line tag item that's there. You want to include keywords from your profession. If you don't know where to find keywords, suggest taking a look at some of those job postings that you're chasing. Each of those will have some of the keywords that are should be in your profile. Your skills from your profession, you can actually have up to 50. But LinkedIn, in its infinite wisdom, only allows you to show three before somebody has to click and show more. The endorsements, somebody to endorse you for those skills and experience. People have education awards certification and professional development. Many of the profiles that I see and most of the resumes that I've looked at as a recruiter over the years simply talk about what some, somebody did to get their degree, their bachelor's or their master's, but they fail to talk about all the awards they might have achieved, the certifications they've received, and the professional development courses. So courses like taking LinkedIn today or taking some of the courses that actually LinkedIn offers that you can get certified for. And then recommendations. Basically, that's a reference letters from coworkers and former bosses that you can include. But it all starts with your profile. Again, we can see that there. Maybe I can get the slideshow to work. It's not working today for some reason. Again, but that just all starts with your profile. You can notice the background photo that I've got there, or banner shot. I've got a good headshot. 
Terry mentioned this morning with your headshots, you want to have one that looks like you when you go for an interview. So it should be fairly professional. And notice the headline that's there. You have about 220 characters. Many people, when they have their headline, simply put down that they have, you know, the first two lines that are there. But again, you can have that. There's a pipe character that you can barely see there, but that pipe character is an uppercase, um, a shift key above the enter key on your keyboard. If you do use a pipe, pipe character or a backslash, be sure and leave a space on either side of it, because if you don't, whatever you linked it to will not be a searchable term. So that's your something about your profile. Next, you want to edit your, pro, your, your URL. When you go over and you click on your profile, there's up here at the top, you can see edit your public profile. Normally LinkedIn will assign you your name and ever, anywhere from eight to 12 characters after that, they can be characters or specialty characters after that. So you wanna personalize it and make it who you are. Mine is Locke Alderson and there's only a couple of us, me and my son, he actually goes by John Locke. So there's a difference there. But if you're a Dick Smith or a Robert Jones, again, you may wanna add something like MBA or North Texas something to identify you so that can be a piece of advertising for you. If it's, if it's okay to use it, you'll get that green check mark. And if it's already in use, you'll get the red X. The next one we wanna take a look at is your privacy settings. Once you click over here in privacy settings, these are some that you can check on. See who can use your email address and who can see your, con your, con your connections. Again, if you're in job search mode, you may wanna turn off who can see your connections simply because you don't want the recruiter to build a candidate list from your connections. Many people like you are in your con connections. They have a similar background. And is your public profile really public? There are some sliders. Again, in that edit visibility, and that when you've looked at your personal and privacy settings, there's some sliders that you can move over. Who can see your background photo, your headline, your summary? Those are some of the things that are available to you that they can show. Again, when the profile comes up, Okay, you have six to 10 seconds to get my attention. In this particular one, you notice I've got the open to work banner around there, okay? Or photo frame as some people called it this morning. And I have that, I have my name and all those kind of things. But those are the things that a recruiter or hiring manager sees. Open the connections. Again, again my, my headline has got some characters. I've modified that and we'll see that in a, in a later presentation, a later, later slide. And the open to work allows you to add five additional job titles or open to service is another one. Somebody had it on their resume when I looked at that profile last week on theirs. Okay, so that's some of the things that you can do with it. Well, let's take a look at some sample headlines. Tell me what's wrong, what you think is wrong with these. I mean, nothing actually wrong with any of them, the unemployed, retired, seeking new job opportunity, or formerly a VP of finance. But they have a negative connotation of somebody who's out of work. And there is a slight stigma that's attached to that. So what you want to do is don't use just those, because if you use just unemployed, then you can see this is a search where somebody searched for headlines where it's unemployed. And it's not, it doesn't generate a lot of interest or activity in your behalf. So let's take a look at some other headlines. Go back a slide. Again, unemployed. Experienced digital design engineer seeking an opportunity is more descriptive, but again, it could amplify further. Here's a, a better one. Again, takes up three lines, and that's about 120 characters. Social media strategists and content managers seeking a new opportunity. They have experience in, with print and digital media. They have public relations experience, marketing, marketing and corporate communications as well. Again, the next one is kind of short and succinct. Again, these were, these were condensed to get it on a slide. But again, it's very descriptive. Supply chain, procurement, purchasing. They could possibly add a logistics distribution or some other words that they can use. Senior accountant, general ledger. It's okay to use some acronyms for your profession, such as AR or AP, accounts receivable, accounts payable, to get it on there, but it, you can also spell it out. The difficulty of listing something like just executive assistant, if I do a search for executive assistant in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and I've done that when I was working with in career counseling with uh, executive assistants for some of the major banks here in town, there were about 35,000 people with executive assistant in their profile. Again, that's basically 3,500 screens on a recruiter when a recruiter pulls up executive assistant. And not any recruiter, I don't know any recruiters that are going to go through 3,500 screens. So by adding some additional descriptive items like budgeting and event planning, it describes a little bit more of the duty. Or if this person had been chairman, uh, executive assistant, the chairman of the board, 
our president of a, of a major, for, major Fortune 500 company. IT project manager, again, this one is another short and succinct one, but it does have some important things with it. Idle is a certification. Scrum Master and Agile, Agile are methodologies today that can be used. It's very descriptive to an IT recruiter. General Manager Manufacturing Aerospace, again, another short one, but it's one that you can use to describe what they're looking for very succinctly. But let's take a look at some other headlines. You notice the top one says VP of Marketing Global. Amplifying that is more descriptive. It's also more inquired, more what inquiring minds want to know. Project Manager. Again, there are about 35,000 project managers in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Again, so this is a way to do that. Couple of customer service, uh, senior manager, customer relations manager, uh, customer success manager is another term that I've used heard recently. But again, more descriptive of what somebody does. We go down to the next one over here. Again, these are some things that you can use with your headline as a headline generator from somebody else's presentation by taking with an adjective, such as accomplished, use several titles, okay? And what value do you bring, specialize in, uh, that you developed or designed, and an example of the results? So those are some of the things that you can do with that. But again, let's click down to the next slide. Again, this first one says how I am, and this is how you can see a senior consultant at Lee Heck Harrison, recruiter resource, consultant and speaker to job networking groups. The next one says down, and I'm sorry it's so hard to read, it says accomplished recruiting consultant, successful executive recruiter, a senior career consultant, highly skilled technical and professional recruiter, a contract recruiter, sought after speaker at workshops and seminars. Again, the notice the difference of the two. Normally these would pull up one after the other. The next year that we wanna take a look at is your dashboard. Again, it's now called your analytics. Again, that is right there. There are three items that are there. Number of project, number of profile views in the last 30 days, the number of posting views that you've had, and the number of search appearances that you've had. And you can also have in that a featured section. And this is the presentations that I've done. I've got seven of them listed. You can have your resume on there. If you're a designer or somebody in advertising, you can have your folio on there as well. My, my son, who's a motion graphic designer, has his reel on there of things that he's designed and done. But if you were to click on the search appearances, this one would show up. The first thing that shows up is where the people have, who were searching found you, what companies they work for. Those companies may be companies that you want to add to your target list because they may have jobs like your job. In my case, they may have been looking for a recruiter for their company, or they may have been looking for a recruiter to help them find a job. But that gives you some idea of what you can do by looking at your analytics. Let's take a look at summary section now. This is a particular good one. Okay, it's a little bit longer than, than I recommend. It's about eight lines long, about nine lines long. Normally I recommend that you have three or four lines and then you break up with another with a spay or a blank line and, and start again with another paragraph. This one starts out senior finance and operations leader with 20 years of business experience in financial planning and analysis. Well, FPNA, as it mentions here at the bottom, is a searchable term, and most good recruiters know about that. Again, but if you're using an acronym like FPNA, the first time that you use it, you want to spell it out like that. But you can see what one actually looks like. He's talking about the different areas and skills that he has, the experience that he has, and those kind of situations. But here's another group of sample resume summaries. Uh, again, you can use first person. Terry Sullivan recommends that, that you can talk personally about you. I'm grateful to the partner with many world-class award-winning companies in executive coaching and leadership development. That gives you an idea of what this person has done. Now, they may be puffing a little bit. Well, I won't say exaggerating or lying, but they may be puffing a little bit, but they do talk about some other things that they've done in terms of competencies and the companies that they have worked for. Again, a strategic, hand, creative, hands-on marketer. Can those kind of statements in a resume tend to be used as fluff and left you can give an example that show what you've done in those kitchens, so give an example. Let's take a look at your experience section. Again, your experience section and the company title, the job title, the company name and dates. Again, one thing that I should add, your, your duties and responsibilities limited to about three lines. If it's a not company that's not too well known, you might want to add a bullet tagline of what the company does. This one has four lines of the description of my duties that I had as a recruiter at Oracle. 
a couple of accomplishments that I had there that I was twice selected as recruiter of the quarter. And I was selected from among 50 recruiters that particular year to attend the club, which was an uh, invitation only trip to, to Bermuda for about three days. I've also included a tagline from an email that my former boss, Amanda Gill, said uh, when I left Oracle in June of 2010. Again, something like that, a very favorable comments from a former boss's boss. If you're unemployed and you haven't, you, you don't have a current position, you certainly want to add a current position. When you clicked on the blue pencil that's there, you can do that. You can talk about the job title that you're looking for. This one said software applications developer. The employment uh, type is full-time that you're looking for. And the current company, rather than talking about a specific company, although that's possible, you may want to talk about a specific industry, open to looking for new opportunities in financial services or telecommunications. Okay. And as you start to type in, <coughs> this one starts to type in, excuse me, Dallas, you notice some artificial intelligence that you can just type in there for where that position is located, where you're located. The next area is And skills. Again, you can list up to 50 different skills as you start to type them in here. You can either select them from the list or add a, add a list right here. And you, if it, it's not one that LinkedIn normally recognizes, you won't be able to add it, but you can have up to 50. But LinkedIn will select the three. The next slide down. In my you case, can lock. Yes. Uh, in the lower right hand corner of your screen, there's a little slider bar. Can you click on that in the lower right hand side and slide that over? It'll make, I think it should, there you go. It'll make that slide a little Sorry, bit. Sorry, folks. That well, should help a little bit. Whoop, a little too far. Are. Okay, thanks for that, that tip, Jeff. I'm sorry to put people at a disadvantage for that, but my skills that I've listed were executive search, consulting, and talent acquisition. Uh, recruiting, that's another name for recruiting today. Consulting, that's not one that I particularly selected, but I've had a number of people that have endorsed me for that. And you can endorse people for their skills in that particular area, okay? And that's why they did. But the next slide down, as you say, let's say those are not the skills that I want to list. You can reorder those by holding your cursor over the four bars to the right and dragging and drop them down. You notice some other areas for the on mine that are there. Since I do have a background. I'm working for a professional services company. I've worked in human resources. I've done screening of candidates, technical recruiting. But if I were emphasizing executive search, consulting, and talent acquisition, those might be the three that I want to show because those are the first three that a recruiter or hiring manager actually sees. The next story we want to take a look at is you might want to ask the question, well, why do I want to take an other look at other people's profiles? Well, again, you want to do a profile search on yourself. In this case, I use recruiter in Dallas-Fort Worth area. Again, if you don't put something in the, the area here, right, it will default to the United States. So you do need to add that. But this was a people search. Again, you can go to jobs. And when you go over to that, the jobs is here. There's a drop-down arrow with people and groups and things like that. In the Dallas-Fort Worth area at the time that I did this search, there were about 26,500 people that had recruiter in their profile. Now, they're not all looking for jobs as a recruiters, but that's the potential that people are looking for, the recruiters would look for, or hiring manager would look at when looking for a recruiter. So if you could, if we were to click open on Christina's profile, and if those words that she's using are not in your profile and they apply to you, certainly appropriate them, adopt them for your own profile, see if it doesn't increase your ranking. I know when I was active on LinkedIn on a daily and weekly basis as a recruiter, I usually showed up the first two screens, which means the first 10 screens. I mentioned 3,500. Or in this case, they're 26,500. That's 2,651 screens of recruiters because there are 10 of these thumbnail sketches per screen. So you want to show up in the first, first 10 screens where you're probably not going to show up when somebody does a search. Moving on, I want to take a look at how does LinkedIn run a search? How do recruiters actually do their searches? And so some computer, some some recruiter search results, and how do you go about looking and searching for jobs? Well, the first thing we want to take a look at is what does recruit, what does a recruit LinkedIn do in terms of that? They give every section of your profile a score. And when the scores or values or each section are added up when somebody does a search, the, high, the one with the highest score is going to 
right at the top of the list of candidates. Again, the things that recruiters look for, first thing is gonna be keywords and skills. They want an exact match on the job titles for your current job, your previous jobs, and those jobs in your headline and the open to work section. Those are areas where you can have titles and you can have it multiple times. I tell the example when I moved from Siebel to Oracle and Oracle was purchased Siebel, we were looking for a Siebel consultant in Minneapolis, Minnesota. If those are the only words that I gave you when you applied to a job posting, you'd think that that's a must for the job description for any candidate that I looked at. Well, you're right. 50 of the 75 people that applied didn't even have the word Siebel in their profile. I know why, or in their resume, I know why they did it because they think, well, Oracle's a major corporation. They're bound to have other jobs in the Minneapolis St. Paul area. But I was looking for Siebel consultants. So I looked at the other 25. And then it was a question whether they had Siebel once, might have been a Siebel user as a software product, or Siebel 10 times, they might have been a consultant who'd actually installed the product, which is what I was looking for. The other things that they have, companies, specific companies and industries. Uh, healthcare is the one that's particularly noted to finding candidates from the healthcare experience, and some other industries are the same way. Are you open to work? Recruiters like open to work, but you're the low hanging fruit. They don't like to be told no. I know when I started my own recruiting firm and took some training, they told me if I was gonna make 25 placements a year, again, which is a pretty good rating, a pretty good, pretty good number with a pretty good income for a recruiter. Again, I was gonna make 5,000 phone calls and 4,000 of those calls would be no. So again, the open to work is the uh, basically saying, yes, I'm open to consider other things. Geographic location is important because Candidates have taught recruiters they don't really want to drive more than 20, 25 miles to work. So recruiters limit their searches to 25 miles, and that's why that's the default setting on most of the job boards that you'll find in terms of geographic. Having a completed profile is another thing that you want to have, okay? And then the connections that you might have. So what, are really, what do recruiters really search for? The first thing that they look for is keywords, okay? And they look for job titles for past, present jobs, in your headline, you're open to work at about an employment sections. They look at your skills. They look at specific industries and companies. They look at your educational background. I've interviewed for a job where a company was looking for an MBA from a top 10 business school in the United States. Well, I happened to go to UC Berkeley. Depending upon whose list that you look at, will be on that list of top 10. Location is important. Again, if they're looking for somebody in Dallas, some jobs, like with that Oracle consultant, I was looking for somebody up in, in Minneapolis, St. Paul. And in some of those kinds of consulting positions, they could be anywhere in the country. They may be open to relocation. Now look at prior companies and your length of service. Again, your pedigree, what is it? How long were you there? Were you a job hopper? Those are some of the things that people look at. Recruiters are no different than anybody else. This is a search screen. This is the data input screen from this, the uh, software license for a recruiter. This happened to be from Kurt Vandemotter's presentation, but you can notice there are, I think, six or eight screens that he can input data. And he can check any of these boxes to limit his number of candidates down. And this particular one, when he actually run, when we actually run a search, which is the next one, which was a pretty general search, the individual who ran it probably wouldn't be very successful as a recruiter because they ran it for an account, but they didn't narrow it down to location. So there were within the United States about 40. 4,280,000 candidates. Again, you can notice that there in terms of the results. But let's take another look at another result. This particular one was for a product manager and that was in the Seattle area. They consider somebody in the San Francisco area. And again, the skills that they were looking for, you could notice that product marketing, product, product management, competitive analysis. They were looking for specific companies but because they're in the Seattle area, Microsoft, Amazon, and Fluke are all headquartered there. So that's the result that they have. But notice that they had, there were in that search there were about 6,900 candidates. Some of them were following the company and followed, followed the company actively in this 2,500. And again, they were engaging in your brand. They, they kept up with your press releases of that company. So that's how they get found. But let's move on and do one more. Again, this was for, sorry about that. This is for a project manager in Chicago area. They can send somebody from, from New York or from San Francisco. Again, this particular search drew 40, 
almost 43,000, but only 83 of those were open to new opportunities. So which ones are the recruiters probably gonna look at first and probably find a couple of candidates in that group? Again, have company connections and engage with a talent brand. Now, the other things that they were looking for make greater Chicago area, the things that they were looking for in skills were business strategy and analytics. These are some of the other skills that they listed, okay? And the companies, they were looking for high-tech companies like Google, Facebook, Evernote, LinkedIn, or some other companies that they were actually looked in at. So let's, ask, let's next take a look at a job search. Again, in this particular job search, you have a search box. When you clicked on jobs right here, it's gonna open up and have two search boxes. Open search jobs by title, et cetera, and search by location. If I were just to enter a title here in the job search and not in our location, again, it's going to default to the United States. So you want to enter both. Unless you've entered that one time, if you've entered it once and changed the search term here in terms of the title, it will go on and check another one. Well, let's take a look at this one. This was for an accountant in Plano, a senior accountant. Notice the default setting for 25 miles. LinkedIn has now reduced that to five and 10. They all used to have 15 miles as well. Date posted is a critical thing that you want to look at because the average response time to a posting on the internet, whether it's a job order to LinkedIn, is about two minutes. And there can be as many as a couple hundred responses in the first hour. It's possible that you've encountered when you found a job and come back to it later in the day that this job is no longer available. Okay. Sometimes recruiters forget to take them down. I know when I was with Oracle, I had some jobs that I left up. They were kind of called bucket jobs. I'm looking for candidates all the time for that kind of a job anywhere in the country. But I was kind of the exception in that regard to a lot of recruiters. But date posted, these are some of the filters. I'm going to take a look at that next. Well, first, we're going to take a look at uh, searching for jobs. Again, this is another one. This was for a software engineer, again, in Plano. Again, a software engineer in Plano. There were about 4,400 results. Again, this particular job, this first one that's mentioned here, the description is over there. So you can take a look at that over here and find out, do you match some of those? Because a good idea or a good rule of thumb on job postings, if you don't apply, if you don't match 75 to 80% of the qualifications, don't apply. Probably not a good idea. It's probably a waste of your time. You can spend it more productively. With each of those jobs, there's a little button here called set an alert. That's what this screen is all about. By clicking that filter or changing that radio button to on, you have an option of choosing whether you want a description, a thumbnail description of this daily or weekly. And again, that's what this on below shows. And again, you can have as many of those as you want. I suggest that you do that because that'll give you an idea. You don't have to go searching for a job. Those thumbnail sketches come in about, oh, sometime between eight and nine in the morning. And you can run through them pretty quickly. I know I still get them, even though I'm not looking for a job, I still get those kind of things as well. Well, let's take a look at the filters as the next year. This screen is an old one from LinkedIn. Again, right now, LinkedIn, when you click on the filters, it's on the right side of the screen, the right third of the screen. But the filters allow you to do a couple of things. I mentioned changing to the past week. That's one in terms of posting that you want to do. If you have an unusual thing and the job has not been filled, you may want to expand that to a, to a month. But again, this particular one for a recruiter in Dallas County, you know, any time the jobs were still posted, there were about 2,100. Over the past month, there were about six to 1,500. Again, something new that LinkedIn picked up from Indeed.com was a salary estimate. Again, this is not comprehensive and not every job will show a salary posting. But again, it gives you some idea of a ways to filter the jobs. Of these 42,087 jobs, most of them are pretty entry-level kinds of jobs, about half of them. And you can notice where they are. A couple are up in the director and executive ranks. Easy apply is something else that you might want to consider. If easy apply, if you click that and it allows you to upload your resume, it's something that you might makes it easy to apply. If it, actually, if it only takes your LinkedIn profile, I do not recommend that because you can't customize your profile every time that you apply. But on this particular one, again, you can notice the jobs, some information about them. The other things that you can choose are, again, the types of jobs. Most jobs on LinkedIn are, and most job boards are going to be full-time, but there are also some others that are available, contract positions. Again, there are some contract recruiter positions. And I've had in my career of 40 plus years, I probably had at least a dozen contract slots that I was working on. 
There's some part-time jobs that are available. The job that I had with Mullen International and with Lee Heck Harrison were both part-time jobs, although at times they seem like they were full-time when you're putting in 40 hours a week. You can choose location as well. Again, if I lived in Plano, I might not be willing to go out to, to uh, Irving for a job. I know when I was with, with Siebel, I was, they were located at uh, Luna Road and, Bel and uh, 635. And then when Oracle bought them, they moved it further south uh, down to the old Xerox building in Las Colinas, which meant it was a 40 minute commute, I mean, a 45 minute commute. They offered me the option to work from home. Again, that's something new as well. Hybrid situations will be shown on some of the jobs. There's a list of the companies that are available. Okay, HCL Healthcare, that's the medical city, different hospitals that are around. And again, industries that you can sue. So these are some of those when you can apply those. If you get, if you get, find that you narrow the jobs down too much, you can go back or cancel and reset, and it will start with your original search results. Okay, let's take a look at networking. We will look at, at st strategies for searching for people. And there are a number of ways that we can do that. The first one is using the search box at the top. Uh, Carol Brickle, who did a, did a thing on resumes for Jeff, she did a search on me and just using my first name. And you can notice how I showed up on the list. Again, your first name or your name is the most important term that's found in searches by LinkedIn. Okay, so be aware of that. Again, Lock Lord is, an, is a law practice. There's a hotel firm. There's an uh, information technology services firm, and there's also a locker room, which I think is a retail store, and another law firm, and a charity golf match, okay? But those are just some of the ways that you can do that. How can you find recruiters on LinkedIn? Again, by doing recruiter for cybersecurity, this is a condensed one, in the Dallas area location, I noticed what the result were with doing that cybersecurity sales recruiter. Here's another recruiter. Here's another rec recruiter engineering at Google. Again, there are 2,100, 21,000 results. Again, that include all active and former recruiters at Google. So, sorry about that. But again, that gives you the names of recruiters. So when you see their name there, and you take a look at the, you can click on them and look at their summary and review the company website. It gives you some information when you include a resume to them that you can send to them. You can look for people. Again, if I search by job type up here at the top, again, when you've done jobs, you go to that job down menu over there. These are the, the different areas that you can search. You can search job, you can search for people, you can search for groups, et cetera. Again, by looking for jobs for a recruiter in Dallas Fort Worth area, Again, you can notice how that, that you can do that here in terms of that, in terms of location. Again, because there was a location, I had to check location for Dallas Fort Worth in that particular one. So you can search for people that way. You can also search for people in your own network. Again, you, your connections that you have, and you can increase that by clicking on the different filters that they have. You want somebody to say first and second degree connection in the Dallas Fort Worth area with Lennox International in the field of talent acquisition. That's a pretty specific search that you're looking for a recruiter at Lennox International. Recruiter might be another word that you could use. Again, sometimes the results will not come back anything. So don't give up if the first word that you've chosen doesn't show results. Try another one that's similar. Again, this was a company search for a company I met at Analytics, which is a company over here in Richardson on, on, on Bush. And again, was looking for a company there and looking for their website and looking for people at that company. I clicked on they have 510 employees worldwide. The next thing that I do on that particular one, is looking for a recruiter in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Again, by clicking on that, it shows the different areas that they where they live in terms of Dallas Fort Worth area. There's 129 employees here. Where they school, where they went to school, and then by clicking on that, they lived in the Dallas Fort Worth recruiter. Brianna Sham was actually the recruiter that they have in their Dallas location. One additional thing about about company searches is that you can go to company searches and they do have jobs on their posting. Okay, those jobs may or may not be on LinkedIn proper, but again, you can do that and you can set an alert for those jobs, create a job alert for those jobs as well. 
The last thing we want to take a look at is to use your homework to take away with you from, from the presentation today. Again, you want to complete your, your profile section. Have it complete. Again, it's one of the criteria that shows up in the, when an algorithm is run on a search. Use the name that you're known by when you're called on. My legal name is John Locke Alderson Jr. Again, I go by the name that I'm, but I recognize I will answer to John if no one else would name John, Al John Locke Alderson is in the room like my son. Again, the headline should be the job title or titles of the positions that you're looking for. If you don't put a title down in your headline, it's gonna to default to the title of your last job in your employment section. Complete the open to work section. One of the advantages of the open to work section, you can have two options there. You can open it up to just recruiters or you can op open it up to all of LinkedIn. If you're currently working for a company, you may not wanna open it up to the, to the world of LinkedIn. You may wanna limit it to just recruiters. It's just below your headline. Some people don't like that banner around there from about five o'clock until about nine o'clock, uh, that photo frame, if you will. But again, it does let people know that you're looking for opportunities and recruiters like people that are looking for opportunities. Do include your phone number and your email in the first line of your about section. It can also be at the bottom, but only the first three lines of your about section show up when I open up your profile. So you want it to be there prominently. You can also have it up in your banner. I know Jeff, if you look at Jeff's profile on LinkedIn, it's up in his banner photo as well. And there's a company called Can, Can, Canva.com. I think that you will help you to create banner photos and do things like Jeff has done. Again, the experience section, have the company names and job titles that are there. Use the titles that are commonly recognized in industry, not that are job specific to a particular company and on their job require on their job table in compensation. List the duties that you have. Also list some measurable results. You don't want long paragraphs, three or four lines, maybe five lines for each section of duties that you have is, is specific. So you want to cut it down and make sure it's specific and very focused. By adding accomplishments or results, they add credibility. And a lot of people don't do that. So it gives you kind of a leg up. Do use the keywords from your profession. Again, if you don't know what they are, I'll mention again, look at the job postings that you're looking at. That'll give you a key to what some of those words are. Do include the skills from your profession and choose the top three that are gonna help you support the job that you're looking for. Do a people search on yourself and in your title and your ge geographic area. If you don't show up in the first 10 screens, pop open some of those other thumbnail sketches to candidates and I won't say plagiarize, but use some of the verbiage that they've used as well. Again, if you want a copy of the slide deck, it's lockalderson at gmail.com. Jeff, we're gonna open it up to questions. I'm gonna try and go to Got it up, Jeff. What would you like to do? Let's open it up to questions, but we can take a look, quick look at my profile if we want. Okay, I'll let you uh, relaunch or re redo that. Okay. Okay, can you see my profile? Yes, we can see okay, it. Okay, we did it today. Notice how I've got that pipe character that I mentioned here. Again, if you do that, I've used about 220 characters. I've used some of the adjectives that I mentioned. I think it makes a stronger profile a stronger headline statement. The contact information, if we look at my contact information, again, my email address and my phone number. Again, you wanna have your address, rather than your, your email address, you may wanna have your city, state, and zip code because that's how recruiters search. That's how they determine that 25 mile radius is having that there, okay? Here are the activities and analytics that I mentioned that I've appeared on 127 search appearances have 27, 20, 84 post experiences. Actually of the profile views and search appearances, actually of the search appearances of only people have only popped open my profile 100 times from the 127. Creator mode is something that's there as well. The about section, as I mentioned, the first three lines are all that are gonna show without, I can see more. And I have let's connect with my Gmail address. I'm not interested in phone calls. I will take them. Again, that's why it's in my contact information. I've got the featured section. I've included today's presentation is already included up there. And the presentation, I have about seven, but you can include other things as well. The followers that you want to have, do follow people. I can start a post. I posted this presentation as it mentions there. I 
reposted that yesterday because I made an error in the original posting. Again, another thing about the jobs, you can, it's possible to have multiple jobs. Okay, these are all, these three are all at the same time, although Frisco Career Transition Workshop, the last one that we did was last June. Don't know whether we're going to continue that or not. I haven't made contact with Foster Williams to follow up on that. Again, my time at, at Lehigh Harrison, although they don't show this connected like they do elsewhere, but I have 14 other experiences. The one I like to show is my experience at Raytheon, not at Raytheon, but at, at uh, Oracle. This arrow line shows because Oracle purchased Siebel, okay? And the Raytheon was e-systems. They don't have the e-systems as well on this particular one. Jeff, let's see if some people would like to find a job or like me to look at their profile. So if you'd like the, if you've got a job you'd like us to look up, uh, just put the job in the chat box or you can unmute your mic and say, Bill, I see you've got your mute mic unmuted. Do you have a question? Bill Thomas? Nope, I guess not. All right, if somebody uh, wants to put a, a <coughs> job title in the uh, search box and we'll go look for that. We'll try to find that job for you. Anyone, job title? How about you want us to look at your profile? We'd be glad to look at your profile. Just uh, tell us, tell us your name. Hey, this is uh, this is David Webb, and I put my profile in the chat, a link to my LinkedIn profile in the very first chat box. I don't know if that's David, David, a David Allen Webb, A L L A N. Web, A L L A N, Web. That one? Nope. It's all all slammed together. No spaces. Well, I'm not finding you, David. So I guess I don't exist. <laughs> Let's do it a different way. Okay. Dude, I'm going over jobs, and then I'm going to. Yeah, I wouldn't be at. Yeah, it'd be people. Okay. Yeah, just put David Webb, and let's see if it pops up. Okay. Just type David Webb. That's you, David. Which one are no, you? No, I'm the fifth or sixth one down. Keep going right there. That's me. That's one. Okay. Normally, if you do this and Jeff will fuss up, I'm just going to go ahead and connect. Okay? Perfect. Okay. If you, do, if you do put the connect button, it gives you the option to add a personal memo. Right. I'm going to add a note just. We're here. Yeah. And I'm going to send. Perfect. Normally, you, normally you want to send an invitation because people do. Re, if you just click on it, that, that they people will reject it. I don't. Jeff and I both do not accept all the invitations we receive. Okay, you've used the cloud word cloud. I think for your background, correct, which is good. That's very descriptive of that. You've used about 85 characters in your headline section, which is fine. Nothing wrong okay. with that. But because we're second degree connections, this is very important. And the reason yep. I emphasize adding your connection or contact information in your about section, this is all that I can see on David, okay, as a recruiter or hiring manager. Wow. So let's scroll down into his about section, okay? His about section is, is Seymour, and he's got some notable things there. He's got his contact information, but it's all the way at the bottom of his, of his about section. I would take that and put it at the top. You can have it at the bottom if you want, but definitely put it at the top because that means that I just have to click once. I don't have to see more, okay? Perfect, thank you. 
I know Terry says put it at the bottom, but I, because I've been a recruiter, Terry's not been a recruiter, I want to do that, okay? But you have a good profile section, short statements. Again, you've done use bullets to break things up in terms of things and activity, award-winning revenue growth. Amplify that as, as, as possible. You know, giving, right. giving some numbers in terms of size and scope is always a good idea. Thank you. Uh, scroll back up for just a second. In his about section, right in that paragraph where it says core competencies, I would put spaces between the slash because okay. if someone okay. uh, sales, sales, sales slash business is not searchable. Okay. So if you Good want to somebody, know. If you want somebody finding you for business development, you ain't going to show up. Just okay. like you, just like you use the space on either side of the slash here. Right. I used all 2,600 characters and I, that was, <laughs> that, that's why I uh, chose to do that. But I'll go back and undo that. Well, you have to undo that because otherwise you might as well not put in sales business as a term because it's not searchable. Perfect. That's why I wanted you to look at the profile. Thank you. Okay. On each of your experiences here, the thing that I might suggest, applied medical. Okay. You're saying that's, okay. I would put something, what did you accomplish for each of these jobs? If you have a bulleted one line item of a great biggest accomplishment for each one, of them, you know, okay. consistent uh, sales, consistently achieve sales quotas. Right. Our number one salesperson in, uh, for two years running. Okay. Those are the kind of, if you have them, put them. If you don't, don't worry about it. I, I think they're there if you click see more, but, but again, you're again, saying put it above to, the see more, right? I'm having to click see more. Okay. Okay. It looks good other than that. Let's look a little bit further down. You've got things like that. He's gotten a certification that's important. The vendor. He's volunteered, mm -hmm. and volunteer experience is good to have that as well. Where were your where was your skills section? Okay, it was right there. Notice he has three skills there. Okay, those may not be the skills that you want to have. So when you do that, use open up to the blue pencil. Open this all up. I you, I did that. Yes. Okay. So that's something that you can do as well. Okay, let's take a look at somebody else, Jeff. We have about about eight minutes left to go. Or yeah. Somebody wants to look at a job. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. All right, E L N O R A, E L. Yes, that's me, Elnor. I'm sorry, I intended to put my LinkedIn profile information and in. I, I hit the send button. But I do want to ask a question if there's time. If not, I can take it offline with Lark. I yeah. someone someone um, indicated to me that I have multiple profiles and a couple of them are very old. What's the best way to remove the old profiles or merge profiles? There's a way that you could do that. I would call the help desk at, at uh, At LinkedIn, is this you, Eleonora? That first one, yes. Okay. Welcome from Atlanta. How's the weather over in that part of the country? Oh, it's hot. Okay. Notice, I'm going to go back for just a second. One of the things that Jeff will point out, do not use this connect button. That does not right. allow you to personalize the message. So when I go over to, to click on her and I wanted to connect. And see those other two under there? Those are me too. Those are the ones that I, those are old ones that yeah. I didn't it's maintain. Gonna that I didn't it's going to be over here in the personal section on your, in terms of your privacy and settings. Okay. Search through that about merging profiles. Okay. I mean, I assume, I assume that you put all of your, those other, all the information from the other two profiles are in your current one, correct? Correct. Yes, correct. So in that case, I would just go and delete them. Okay, I didn't know if it was easy as that, or I would delete something I shouldn't have. So yeah, I mean, as long as you have rights, as long as you can still get into it, I mean, I would, you know, I imagine each one of those must be under a different email address. Yes, they are. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, well, let's let's take a look at people we may know. Okay, the contact information is. I'm going to show you again, folks. This is all that's available. 
if I were to try and contact you. So you want to do that, you can do that. You, you can open up your settings so that people can see your profile, more of your contact information, or have it in your about section. Okay. Okay, thank you. Where is your about section? I don't think she has one. You don't have uh, one. something nice. that you need to add. Okay. I will get to work on that. Thank you. That's something that you have. Again, notice how her jobs at, at Nokia have been merged here under one. This is what this line means there. Okay. And you don't have any skills. So you don't have any skills one. either. Okay. okay. When you go in and click on your profile like this and click on your profile. I'm on. For some reason, mine is not responding. Okay. You have the blue pencil and you can add seconds. There's a section where it said add sections. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is your edit your public profile is over here and there. These are some settings that you can take a look at. Edit your visibility is one of those. By editing your visibility, you want to turn those buttons on, those slider buttons. Okay. okay. And you can look through all of them that are there. Okay. So I'm going to back up. How do I get out of this? Just click on home again, I guess. Okay. It's taking its sweet time this morning. Oh, you want to click on the next tab over. That's what's happened. What? Click on that second tab. This one? Nope. Second tab. Second well, tab. you're there because you're, you're still in edit my profile. Yeah, you want to go home, but. There you go. It's not the right uh, Eleonora. Yeah, it is. Okay. Well, thankful that information for somebody who did their did their business. <laughs> okay, somebody else want to take a look at their profile or look for a job real quick? Well, I tell you what, we're up at the top of the arrow right now. So if somebody okay. wants to reach out to you or me, they're welcome to do so. So let me just share a couple of screens here and we will get out of here. Uh, like Locke said, if you'd like to get his presentation, you're welcome. I know it was really small today, but if you want to send him an email at lockalderson at gmail.com, you're welcome to reach out to him uh, and he'll send you the slide deck. Uh, of today's presentation. Uh, next front, next Tuesday, our speaker is Terry Sullivan. He's going to talk about how to tell your key contacts and prospects who you are, what you do, and how you can help. Uh, the session will not be recorded, so if you do want to watch it, you do need to watch it live. It will uh, be deleted off of Facebook immediately after the session's over. Okay, if everybody will please raise your right hand and repeat after me. Uh, Jeff Morris promised to always send a personal note whenever I send a LinkedIn request to connect with anyone. This includes when I use my cell phone or my computer. As Locke mentioned, you never want to click on the white connect button. You want to look for the blue connect button. So when you see a white connect button, click on the person's face. It'll take you to their profile and then you'll be able to find the blue connect button. Career DFW and Career USA, we're putting on training four days a week. Please join us. Uh, tomorrow, the practice interview team will be able to watch an actual practice interview by the pit crew. It will only be on Zoom. It will not be on Facebook. Uh, this Thursday, being the first Thursday of the month, we'll talk all about resumes. It'll be a two-part session, best practices for an efficient, effective resume. And then if you'd like to submit your resume to share, uh, you can share your current draft resume and we'll take a look at it. If you do that, though, please delete your personal information at the very top because it will be out on Facebook and Zoom from here to eternity. Uh, this Friday at the North Dallas Plano Career Focus Group meeting, we're going to have open forum. We'll talk about whatever it is you want to talk about. 
Uh, you're an expert and you can offer your opinion, so you're welcome to do so. So please join us this Friday morning at 930. If you'd like to join the Career DFW or Career USA LinkedIn groups, you're welcome to do so. You do not need to live in the Dallas Fort Worth area to join the DFW group. You do not, if you live in the Dallas Fort Worth area, you can still join the Career USA group. You can join either one or both. Uh, the Career DFW group uh, last week, we passed 13,700 members. So it's a great way to be able to expand your connections and reach out to other people. One additional thing, Jeff, about those members, you don't have to have you don't have to be directly connected to those people to send them an in mail. Right. So you're, being a member of a group allows you to do that. The other thing about members of groups, sometimes and Jeff's group does as well, they post jobs within the group that are not on LinkedIn, even though they're in LinkedIn. Okay. And the other group I recommend you join is whatever profession it is you do, find those professions and join those groups because it's a great opportunity for you to network with other people. And like Locke said, it's an easy way to reach out to some people in those categories. This session has been recorded. It will be on the Career DFW Facebook page and in a couple hours it'll be up on the Career USA YouTube channel. Please uh, check each page, subscribe to them. We really, really appreciate that. On the Career USA YouTube channel, it looks something like this. Click on the group where it says playlist, where that green arrow is. And then at the very bottom, instead of clicking on the video, click whichever view full playlist you'd like to see, and up will come a list of all the different titles and topics and dates. Uh, most current ones should be on top that you can go back and watch at your convenience anytime you'd like. If you're not receiving emails about our workshops, if you didn't find out about this through an email blast somehow, you're welcome to join the Career USA mailing list. You will not be spammed, but what you will get on a daily basis is the topic of the day, the title of the topic of the day, and most importantly, the Zoom link. That way you can grab your lunch or grab your breakfast and just join us for our meetings uh, on a daily basis. Please remember Career DFW, we're a 501c3 nonprofit organization. All of our speakers are volunteers. I'm a volunteer. Everything I've done over the last 13 years has just been here to help you land your next great opportunity. Please consider making a donation so we can continue to provide the services that we do. So thank you very much for joining us today. Today is our 486th workshop that we've put on. So we appreciate it. Locke, thank you very, very much. And we'll see you for having me, Jeff. Hopefully later in the week.